Hi everyone. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to find limits graphically, numerically, and discuss some properties of limits. So let's actually use the same example from the last lesson. So let's say that this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. And on the right, I want to write our function once more. So f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, right? Um, and we already found a few values, right? So we know that f of 0 is equal to 1. We know f of 1 is not defined, right? So I'll just write d and e, so it does not exist or undefined. f of 2, um, this is going to be 3 over 1, so this is just equal to 3 f of 3, this is equal to, so that will be 8 over 2. So this is going to be equal to 4. And then f of, well, you know, yeah, let's do f of 4 as well. That will give us, so that will give us 15 over 3. So that's 5. And then just for fun, let's, so we know, we know the numbers around 1, right? We know 0 is going to be 1. Um, we're going to skip 1, then we're going to go to f of 2, that's going to be 3, then we have 4, then we have 5. So already we can kind of see a shape. It's looking a lot like a line. So let's just graph that. Let's make a dot here at 1 because we know it doesn't go there. It, that's not defined. And then we'll continue it. So this is f of x. y equals f of x. Um, and you know, let's also add some coordinates. So, and now we've got our graph. Now, what do you notice? It looks a lot like a line, right? Um, and there is a reason for that, which you'll find out in the next video. But as you can see, as x goes towards 1, you can see that like clearly f of x is approaching something, right? It's approaching this point over here. And by looking at the graph, we can see, you know, this looks to be right around 2, right? It looks like a line. This looks like 2. So maybe the limit as x approaches 1, of f of x is equal to 2, right? That's what we're thinking right now. Um, so this is a graphical approach. Over here, we've gotten this. But as you can see, and as you can probably imagine, graphical approaches aren't always the best because as the functions get more and more complicated, it's much harder to estimate it off the graph. So that's why there's something called the numerical approach, right? And over there, we basically just make a table. So we've got x, uh, and here we've got f of x. And we just go to values that get closer and closer to 1. And then we see what we get. So let's say that x is equal to 0 0.5. Right? When x is 0 0.5, what do you get over here? Uh, you get, okay, 1.5. Similarly, if we do the same thing for um, 0 0.9. So now we're getting closer and closer to 1. I'm just, I'm putting these numbers randomly, by the way. I'm just trying to get close there just to show you the idea. I'm not actually... You know, um, there's no real science to why I'm choosing these numbers, but this becomes 1.9. I'm not going to show you all the rough work, but just believe me. You can check the calculations yourself if you want. And if we go to 0 0.99, then this will go to 1.99, right? Now, again, we can't figure out what it is at 1 exactly, so we'll skip that. But we can, we'll still put 1 here, but we aren't going to write the value down there. Now, what about 1.01? .01? This is going to end up becoming 2.01. And then uh, similarly, 1.1 will become 2.1, 2.1, and then 1.5 will become 2.5. Okay, so I'm sure you've already found the pattern here between like how you go from x to f of x. But the point here is that, uh, the point here is that as x is going towards 1, you can see this is getting closer and closer to some number, right? From here, it's 1.9, 1.99, 1.99999. And here, it's going from 2.1, uh, to 2.01, to 2.0001, 2.0001, you know what I mean? So eventually this is going to 2, right? From both sides, it's approaching 2. And so this is the numerical approach. You'd basically, instead of graphing the thing, you just plug in the numbers here. You've got um, a tabular representation, and then you figure it out from there. In the next video, we're going to see how you can get an exact answer, right? You don't want to leave anything up for debate. Just get an exact answer. Yes, we're done. And it'll also be faster than both of these approaches. We're going to discuss that in the next video. But before that, let's look at some limit properties. Okay? So the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x is equal to 
the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And obviously, if you can, since they're equal, you can go from here to here or you can go from here to here. So both, it, it's interchangeable. Um, and actually, I should make this plus minus because it's the same both ways. Right, this is one important property. And there's several other ones as well. There's limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a. Now be careful here. It's of f of x over the limit, right? So as you'd expect, but there's one important you know, rule here, the limit, and it's a pretty obvious rule. This cannot be equal to zero, right? Because you can't ever divide by zero. So that's that shouldn't be the case. It's the same with multiplication. So the limit as x approaches a of f of, well, um, f of x times g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Okay, and here there are no rules like this. So uh, these are three important rules. I'll just number them off here. One, two, three. So these are three pretty important rules and these help you with a lot of you know complicated limits. Now, uh, and you can also combine these, just so you know, you can combine them and do you know simplifications with that. There are other rules as well, but we'll, we'll get into those in other videos. These are the three basic rules that you need to know for now. And um, yeah, just keep in mind. So over here, we did get the answer of two, right? Both ways, we got this answer of two. And in the next video, we'll find another way to get that answer, but without any, you know, there won't be any room for error. There won't be any room for doubt. And we'll also get the answer in a much faster way. So I'll see you there.